Hello, I'm Linda Bennett, your spiritual counselor and psychic host for Metaphysically Speaking. Tonight, we're going to talk about open metaphysical questions, anything you want to know, and three special beings who send energy to the planet at this month. Stay with us. 546-7379. Start dialing with your personal questions right now. Three special beings send extra special energy to the planet Earth. Mary, Buddha, and Avalokiteshvara. And during the body of the program, I'm going to be telling you who they are and why they do what they do and how you can benefit from that. And open metaphysical questions. Anything you want to know on uh, special dreams, symbols, different religions, uh, maybe just a smidgen about UFOs, all kinds of interesting stuff. So anything you want to know, that's what you can ask about tonight. And the class tomorrow night is all about that as well. So stay with us. Now we've got personal phone calls now. This is where you ask anything you want to know about your personal life or anything else. So 546-7379. Call her first name and comment or question. Uh, hi, this is Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Um, I wanted to know, am I going to find my own true love soon? Oh, like tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Um, actually, I'm feeling, I see the number three in front of me, and I'm wondering if it's three months or three years. I'm feeling, uh, how old are you right now? 25. You'll be married by 28. Um, that may seem like a long way off, but I'm feeling that you're going to meet someone and it's going to be a long engagement kind of thing where you get to know each other, you develop a friendship, which is really the best way to do it. Then I see a little bit of a parting and then coming back together again even stronger as you both finally know what you want. And I feel if you wait for the right relationship, that will be your lifetime relationship. Have you done your happy soulmate relationship now, list that I talk about till I'm blue in the face? Yes, yes, I have. How many things are on there? Oh, about 25, 30. 100 at least. <laughs> and well, on the top, it's got to it. say he is already who he needs to be with a history. Okay? I'm sorry, what was that? He is already who he needs to be. Okay with a history. Mm -hmm. In other words, he didn't just give up drinking and doing drugs, uh, you know, a year ago. He didn't just give up gambling six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't just give up running around with the guys, you know, a few months ago. Right. So he's much more mature then? He is mature. He's set in his life pattern of being the type of man that you want to spend the rest of your life with, and he's comfortable with that. If people don't have enough of a time to break a bad habit, the first crisis that comes along, they run right back to that old behavior. Mm -hmm. So you need some, you know, we can't, we can't say, well, you made a mistake, you know, a year ago or five years ago, and so we don't want anything to do with you. If you've made a mistake, learned and grown from it, and now have a new behavior, that's great. Okay, so that's really what you're looking for. And obviously for you guys, she is already who she needs to be with the history. Okay? Well, do you think he's older than I am? Or? Um, not too much older. I mean, it's not like 10 years or anything like that. It's just maybe he feels mature, so it could be your age or it could be just a few years older. Huh. And I do feel he has dark hair. Huh. Okay? Thank you. So have at least 100 things on there. Okay. I'll work on that. Best friends, best lovers, um, uh, metaphysical, meditates, um, God first, us as a couple second. Yes, okay. definitely. Okay. That's, that's very important in my life right now. It certainly is. I mean, his relationship with the universe must come first because that's why he's on the planet as does yours. But then you as a couple come next. Not his mother or his ex-wife or his children. That doesn't mean they're not important. It means that he understands that you are his true mate and you guys take precedence over everyone else. Very interesting. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Come to me for a consultation and bring in your list. Okay. And make sure I can read it. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Take care. Call her first name and comment her question. Linda. Yes. This is Doris. Hello, Doris. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Say, I was wondering if you see a trip for me up to Massachusetts to see my sister. I see two trips for you in sort of a close succession within a couple of months of each other. Did you just come back from somewhere? No. Okay, well, then that's what's headed, um, scheduled. When do you want to go to see your sister? I had no time in mind. When the fairs are great. <laughs> when what? When the fairs get to be great. Um, I'm seeing two trips, Doris, and uh, one I feel you're going to want to take and one I feel you feel the need to take. 
Oh. So um, that's what I'm getting on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Caller, first name and comment or question. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is a guy that um, I haven't What's seen. What's your first name? Oh, Karen. Okay, Karen. Okay, there's this guy that I haven't seen in like a week. Um, actually, I haven't talked to him in a few months, but I saw him the other day. Uh, I was just wondering if you um, see us getting together or see me seeing him real soon again or... No, I don't. But um, what's his first name? Eric. I'm not feeling Eric has you on his mind. Is he going with somebody else? Um, not that I know of. I don't know. I see him thinking about someone else. Um, where do you where do you see him normally? Uh, the store, just the store when I'm passing through, or you know. Well, all I can say is um, try to get to talk to him just a little bit. But I'm not I'm not feeling this is necessarily the one you're going to um, going to wind up with. How old are you? Twenty four. Okay. Keep looking elsewhere. Okay. Okay? Right, thanks. We'll take this call, then we'll go to classes. Caller, first name and comment or question. Hi, my name's uh, Tim. Tim. Okay. And uh, my question is, I'm starting a business in the not-too-distant future. What do you think? I keep hearing careful. Um, uh, I don't feel that it's necessarily as well thought out as it needs to be. I see, like, a lot of things that are, um, are not thought about or attended to or even considered. So I uh, have a really good business attorney, um, a good accountant. If you want to bring in, if you want to come to me for an appointment, bring in the name of the company or what you're calling it and uh, the product or service, et cetera, and I will feel it. Um, for instance, attorneys bring cases to me. I just hold the file and I tell them what I feel about the case. Um, business people with contracts bring the contracts into me and I tell them what I feel about the particular contract. What are the problems? What are the good things? How soon is this going to close? What do you need to do to work it out? And since I see so many loose ends tied up here, you may want to do that with me because what I'm feeling is it would just be start and stop and start and stop and start and stop and not really moving forward with a great deal of energy. Okay? Thank you. Have you incorporated yet? Are you incorporating? No. Okay. No, you're not incorporating or you haven't? Not at this time. Okay. Um, you may need to figure out how you're going to do this and make sure that you're legally protected. So you may want to come in to me and uh, we'll get all this attended to. All it's going to take is one mistake and you'll be in trouble. Okay? Alrighty. And you do have, I see this open opportunity for you within the next six months of starting something, but if it's not started properly, it's just going to collapse like a sinkhole. Well, I'm taking my time with it. Okay. Well, you can take your time, but you have to examine everything. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Caller, first name and comment or question. Hello? Yes, caller. Yes. Uh, my name is Katie. Okay, Katie. And I was wondering, I have recently been in a two-year relationship, and he is the last couple months moved back to where he's from, asked me to move up there with him in a couple months and wondering if I should pursue this relationship or move on to something else. What's his first name? And I'm not feeling you're really deeply in love with him. What's his first name? Brian. Brian? Yes. Okay. And I'm not feeling you're really deeply in love with him. I'm feeling you've got a lot of ambivalence here. It's not just the relocation. It's about the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, what's the thing you like about him least? Um, his trustworthiness, if that mm. is a trait. Um, I'm not sure if I can trust him to go up there as far because I have a child also. Uh -huh. I don't want to put my child in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. I have a good job down here, and I don't want to give that up if, if there's a question with the relationship. Is he going to be coming back here soon to visit with you, or is he just staying up there? He's staying up there. Um, I would have liked to have seen the two of you. Why don't you bring a picture, a recent picture, in of him to let me see, and I'll tell you what I'm feeling, because I'm just, I'm not convinced that this is someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. And um, I'm feeling you would try and try and try and make it work, but I feel like a distancing mm -hmm. between the two of you. So, Do you see me meeting anyone else locally? Not much, honey. The pickings are slim. <laughs> um, You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even date. Um, I feel, yes, there is going to be somebody else, but it's going to be a while before that happens. And I'm getting feedback, guys. And um, you need to be really careful because right now this, this relationship still has you unbalanced a bit. Mm -hmm. And before you jump into anything else, we need to get all of that cleared out. So I hope I see you soon. Bring in a recent picture. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Caller, first name and comment or question. Caller. Hello. Go ahead. Hi, Linda. It's Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to ask you. I just did a um, complete career change. Uh huh. What do you think? <clears throat> what are you doing now? I'm a, uh, in sales, advertising. 
I don't mind that. Uh, I'm feeling that with a little more uh, information and education on this and a little more oomph that I want to give you, mm -hmm. I'm feeling you'll do quite well. Uh, this could either lead to a promotion or to a job at another company uh, in the next year, 12, 14 months. Okay. okay. So stick with it. I feel it's going to be really good for you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. Stay with us. We'll be right back. questions about your personal life? What about your relationships? Where is your life going? How about a career? Do you need to go back to school? What about those spiritual questions you always had in your back of your mind, but you just didn't know to ask about them? Or how about finding out why you're here on the planet to begin with? Call me at 736-4567 and we'll arrange an appointment. Now, if you have a product or a service you'd like to advertise with us, call 736-4567 today. And in our meta moment, this is very interesting information that just came out. More than 300 scientists from 40 countries have warned of lethal effects for the planet if governments fail to implement an international agreement aimed at boosting the world's diminishing ozone layer. As the globe's protective shield, ozone screens out the biologically damaging ultraviolet sunlight that is harmful to humans and crops. It took 300 billion, it took 3 billion, 3 billion, not million, 3 billion years for the ozone layer to be introduced, but less than 15 years for man to deplete it by as much as 50% in certain parts of the world. If this goes on, the planet's ecosystems will not have the time to adapt, which in short, would be disastrous. So think about that, people. Uh, when you are dealing with um, chlorofluorocarbons, when you're dealing with hairsprays, make sure they're safe. Talk about that to yourself when you say, gee, I think I'll just go for a drive. Um, or let me run down to a couple of stores and see if they have it. I make use of the phone book all the time. It saves you wear and tear, it makes your life more efficient, and it enables you to save on precious fuel and little things that you can do like that, including recycling. Little things that you can do like that make the world a better place for everyone because when it goes, it goes. Okay, now we have callers on the line? Open metaphysical questions? Okay, let's take these callers and then I'll explain who's visiting us. Caller, first name and comment or question. Hello? Go ahead. Hi, I'm wanting to know what I need to do to get unblocked. I feel like I cannot get in touch with my inner self. Oh, okay, Are you? do you smoke, drink, or do drugs? Please? Do you smoke, drink, or do drugs? The only thing I do is smoke. I don't do drugs and I okay. don't drink. Okay. The smoking, I know I sound like I'm harping on this, and of course it not only kills you, but it kills us, uh, those of us who don't smoke, but it creates such a foul energy inside your body, inside your aura, that the angels can't come close enough to you to work with you, and you are literally creating this pollution cloud around you so that you can't receive. It's like putting yourself in a body bag and you can't receive the positive energy field in the same intensity that you're supposed to. You're receiving a little or you'd be dead, but you're not receiving the same intensity. The same thing with alcohol, the same thing with drugs. To a lesser extent, the same thing also if you eat animal flesh because you're taking the soul of another creature in your body, you're taking dead, rotted flesh inside your body, and that's creating a whole pollution system. So, you know, I'm, I'm begging all of you to please clean up your physical body so that it can heal and the soul body can now begin to do its job for you. Do your meditation, do the very best you can, but give up the smoking. There is food in my herbal food program that works on the um, cravings and come on in and work with it. You know, uh, the amount of money that you're spending on smoking would more than take care of the food that you'd be eating to make you healthy. But that is the problem with anybody who smokes, drinks, or does drugs, or eats red meat. Okay, so try that for your health, our health, and your spiritual advancement. Okay? Okay. Okay. Call her first name. You know, that's not the answer people want to hear, but you know what? That's it. Okay? I don't make this stuff up. There is no, there's no spiritual being. There's no true spiritual leader on the planet that tells you, have a cigarette, get stoned, get smashed for the weekend. Anyone who tells you that is uh, not what we would call spiritually enlightened or trustworthy. No great spiritual being 
destroys their own body. The body is the temple. You've heard this before, guys. The body is the temple of your soul. The body is what houses the soul. And it's got to be healthy and clear and strong to be able to get you through the day and help you receive the intensity of energy that you're designed to receive. I don't make the news. I just report it, guys. Um, let me talk for a second about uh, Time Magazine from May 15th. I'm going to hold it up here. Here? Where? Here? You. There. <laughs> okay. Here, there, everywhere. Okay. This is May 15th. Take a look at that face. Isn't that interesting? What an interesting face that is. Um, don't forget this face because this is the man who has been working very, very carefully with um, Pat Robertson. Let me open it up inside. And this is called The Gospels According to Ralph Reed. And there he is. He's hitting all the congressmen. He and Pat Robertson and the rest of the Christian Coalition were responsible for sweeping in the Republican Congress people. This is a very insidious movement, people. And I pulled out this letter from the Saturday or Sunday paper. I don't remember which letters to the editor. And it was written by a Bernard Stanton. And he is very upset because he claims that Christian fundamentalists are being persecuted. And one of the things he says in here is that we pray for and support our government. Of course, we try to lead America back to God and the Bible and prayer in schools. But that's not being anti-government. This is not social violence. Well, since our Constitution specifically, specifically, specifically requires a separation of church and state, how could he be saying that trying to overturn our Constitution, trying to make a national Christian religion, how could he say that that's not violence? Fundamentalism, fundamentalism seeks to defend the Christian faith and preach the gospel. It is opposed to apostasy and liberalism in religion, not engaged in anti-government activities. If that's not oxymoronic, I don't know what is. Um, trying to turn this country into a religious state is social and constitutional violence. We have a separation of church and a separation of state. That protects you from being forced to go along with somebody else's religion. And it, it, it protects all of us from having somebody else's concept of religion rammed down our throats. The Christian coalition is not interested in freedom of religion. They are interested in trying to turn the United States of America into a Christian nation, just like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait are Muslim countries run by Muslims. The tragedy in, in Egypt is that it's a free nation, but the Muslim fundamentalists are trying to turn it into a Muslim government, just like Iran and Iraq and Syria and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. There is no freedom there. You cannot be Catholic there uh, and live in peace. You can't be Jewish and live in peace. You can't be Jewish in those countries. You can't be a Protestant. You can't be a Mormon. You can't be a Hindu. You're not allowed to be. You're either Muslim or you're gone. So understand something, people. That's what these people are trying to put in there. And this little contract, they've got a 10-point contract that the Republicans are running after and just is claiming as their own. And uh, what they want to do is allow, uh, they want a constitutional amendment to, to bring prayers into public places, to bring prayers in schools, to have private school vouchers. I don't want to pray, I don't want to pay for somebody else sending their kids to a religious school. And I certainly don't want the Constitution amended. They want further restrictions on abortion and to end federal funding for, end fund, federal funding for the arts humanities and public broadcasting. Every free nation in this world has funding for their arts and humanities. A culture is what helps define a people and a society. It helps determine whether they're barbarians or whether they're civilized people. This is what the Christians are attempting to do. This is very, very frightening people. I suggest you pay attention. This guy looks like a church boy. This guy looks like he belongs in the choir. But as far as we yogis concerned, he's one step short of being a demon. And try that on for size. I'd like to hear your comments. Caller, first name and comment or question. Caller. Caller. Turn your volume down, please, for your TV set. Caller. Yes. Go ahead. Um, my name's Debbie. Okay, Debbie. And it, well, it doesn't really have anything to do with what you were talking about. That's but okay if it's open metaphysical questions. Okay. I was wondering, um, in what is your view of what a spiritual guide is? A spiritual what? 
guide. Oh, a guide, G U I D E? Uh huh. Guide. A spiritual guide is, and I'm glad you said a spiritual guide as opposed to just a guide, because a spiritual guide can help you, if it's a true spiritual guide, can help lead you to your path or another understanding or another experience that will help awaken you. A guide just might be somebody who's telling you um, which school to go to, or if you're taking French classes and you're having a real difficult time, maybe someone who spoke French in a re recent lifetime can help influence you to do better. So um, there, are, there are distinctions, but be very careful who you call in. Always make sure it's in the light, that you're very comfortable with that kind of energy, and it leads you or directs you or pushes you in the direction or points you in the direction, rather, of something that's very positive for you. Okay? But a spiritual guide is someone on the other side. They may be a spiritual energy or they just may be a very, uh, in other words, someone who is identified uh, with a great spirituality or they might be someone who has seen the light in the astral world and is trying to help you out. Okay? Is that the same thing as like um, a protector? Yeah. Yeah, but a protector may or may not be a spiritual being. A protector could even be non-human. It could be some type of animal. Um, I have a couple of animal protectors and that, are, that, that have always been with me. Sometimes people feel them, and uh, they're there to protect me. Lots of people have them. The Native Americans specialize in that. People in India specialize in that. They're creatures who maybe you've, you've had and loved and cared for in another lifetime, and they follow you around, and they, and they look out for you. Even your cat, if it's crossed over on the other side, stays with you. Okay, my, my cats are all in the bed. Just one little sweetie pie in there, but the rest of them are pouncing on the bed as well and walking across the pillow and brushing their tails across my face. So, I mean, they, critters stay with you um, throughout different lifetimes. Okay? I was told that I had like a bear protectant. A bear, B-E-A-R? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, that could very well be. That could very well. It could be that you befriended this bear in another lifetime. Um, maybe you lived out in the woods and it was there and you cared for it, or you uh, uh, helped it when it was injured, or you fed it, or something like that. Or you just got to know each other. We can take another minute on this. Or we, you guys just got to know each other and um, and you accepted each other in the same space. And so it's in the astral world and it's found you and it's and it looks out for you. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's not unusual. You know, we tend to think of, you know, only kindly grandmothers looking out for us on the other side. The universe is wide open with all forms of life and um, astral flowers and butterflies and beings who look like us and beings who don't look like us, who what we would call human type souls. So many different types of souls may be looking out for you or just even passing through and just spending a couple of days with you. Okay. Okay? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Let's take a break, and we'll come right back and explain who is here in the month of May. Stay with us. In our next meta moment, there is no point in lamenting the world. There is no point in trying to change the world. It is incapable of change because it is merely an effect. Change your thoughts about the world. Here you are changing the cause. The effect will change automatically. And that is from a wonderful little book called The Zen Munchkins, and that is available at, um, there we go, there we go, Eastern Art Enterprises. And um, there we go, Zen Munchkins. And there are friends who are right next door to Sears, okay? If you're on Main Street, if you're, if you're passing the Countryside Mall heading north on the right, they're the street right to the right and pop into the left. So uh, Zen Munchkins is a collection of little goodies here uh, from all kinds of philosophies, and I think it's a very worthwhile book to look at. That's not saying don't clean up the pollution on the planet. It is saying change your attitude about even the concept of wanting to pollute the planet. And therefore, you don't have to worry about, well, how can we fix it? It just doesn't occur to begin with. And if there is a problem, it's your automatic response with no holds barred to make sure that it's changed. Okay? Now we've got callers on the line, and then I'm going to tell you about our three special visitors. Caller, first name and comment or question. Is this me? It's you. Okay, I have a question. Why is it? What's your first name? So, well, when you, people call in and ask you questions, I know the answers that you're going to give before you give them, and I don't know where they're coming from. They're coming because your soul is spiritually tuned in, and, and a lot of people tell me that that they, uh, people tell me that they know what I'm going to wear, 
okay, then that night they know what color I'm going to wear. Some people tell me whether they, they know that they can tell if my hair is going to be up and down, up or down. So you could be getting it two ways. You could be tuning into me, like apparently a lot of you are doing, or you could be simply picking it up yourself. Your psychic ability is your soul's mind. We all have a soul. Everything has a soul. And that is your natural intuitive energy. That's the only thing that really matters. That's the only thing that really counts. You can't trust your logic and you can't trust your emotions. That's you sure. can, Right? That's for sure. You see? But, so you then, could, but then why is it when people I'm close to, is it because you're too, you're too close to them and it, there's an interference there? Uh, sometimes your emotions get involved, okay. and so the minute your emotions get involved, then you've got an agenda. And you also restrict the flow of information. You have to be totally clear and totally peaceful about it and not want a certain outcome, because if you want a certain outcome, you simply shut off the information. Right. You have to be willing to let the information flow as it is. And that's why it comes when I'm just for, for anybody that I don't know then. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Okay. And thanks. meditation increases that. Yes, I know very much. Good. <laughs> Sometimes it's really scary. No, what's to be scared about? Oh, I don't know. Just to know what's going to happen. And to not know what's going to happen well, to me is scary. Sometimes. Okay, sometimes. that's the worst. Yeah. Not yeah. to know. When, you're no, when you know, you can prepare or you can change right. certain things. Right. You're right there. The free will does a lot. That's right. And you have a very good program, and I watch it every week. Thank Sometimes you. Sometimes twice a week. Good. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Mm, we'll take this next caller. First name and comment or question. Caller. Yes. Linda? Yes. This is Jean. Hi, Jean. I just called to tell you that uh, I was uh, uh, I liked what you said about the Christian Coalition. Mm -hmm. I hope that you'll keep uh, your audience uh, informed about these people because I agree with what you're saying 100%. I mm -hmm. think they're dangerous. They're not just <laughs> they're not just an aggravation anymore. They're they're da they're getting dangerous. Yes. Chad and, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I also wanted to tell you that I don't know what you're doing, if it's the food you're eating or if it's just because you're uh, divorced and happy now or what it is, <laughs> but you look fantastic. Or how does that guy say you look marvelous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Who's dead? It was Fernando Lamas that used to go on the Carson show all the time and said, you, Johnny, you, you look marvelous. You look marvelous. Oh. <laughs> Look, and Billy Crystal picked up on that, and then when Fernando Lamas died, he didn't do it anymore, that's unfortunately. Right, that's well, right, actually, I'm right. not divorced yet. I oh. can't get rid of this guy. Oh, oh sorry and about that, darling. He's, it's, he's it's say nice a to prayer be for me because he's making my life an absolute misery. How can you be, look so good and be miserable? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell my friends either I'm a saint or a schizophrenic. I'm not sure. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it at saint. But actually, what happens when I do my work, when I do my show, or when I teach, or I do my consultations? The energy flows through me so it doesn't matter what my personal life is like when I'm doing my work it's like an extra beam of light flows down and really energizes me well, you but also it is the herbal food so come on in and eat it <laughs> I, I am going to do that I'm going I'm going up to the uh, flood territory very mm. soon uh -huh. uh, for my son's wedding and when I get back I'm going to do my best to get in for one good. of your, your programs good good <laughs> it, it'll do you the world of good oh yeah do the world of good I'm because, sure it will. because look at me I know <laughs> But anyway, I wanted to tell you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Let me get here to um, Mary Avalokiteswar and Buddha. Now, most people uh, know who Mary is, and I'm talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, I'm not referring to the moment of Mary Magdalene, who is a wonderful spiritual energy and, of course, not a prostitute. And if you want to know all about that, we're going to be talking about that the night of June 1st at the UFO New World Order class. And you're saying, what does Mary have to do with the New World Order? Show up and find out. Mary chooses the month of May and the month of October, apparently, uh, by certain messages that she gives uh, to send special energy here on the planet. Now, it's really fascinating. Of course, the Catholic Church just hates this because they, uh, they, as the Jewish religion and the Muslim religion, have tried to shut down the female energy of God and done so quite effectively, tragically. But Mary is the one quite interestingly, who more churches are named after um, by a huge margin than, say, Jesus. And Mary is the one who's running all over the planet, appearing everywhere to people all across the globe, personally and 
in groups trying to get people to pray and to meditate and to be peaceful. If you remember in Metagori, she was there for years, then Yugoslavia blew up. Uh, problems in Mexico um, appearing there and then different tragedies in the Civil War going on in Mexico. She is a special being who sends radiance and light and strength. Um, she is definitely not the cute little mother that appears on Christmas cards rocking the little baby. She is a very strong individual, very compassionate, but very much telling you to take charge of your personal life. I am very grateful to her because when I was 17, she saved my life personally uh, with a visitation. And um, very much helping people get a new start. She does not just appear to Catholics. She appears everywhere. There are Jewish people who come to me and tell me that they've had experiences with Mary. Um, someone from Iran years ago told me that she had an experience with Mary. So she she appears everywhere. What we have to remember is that God, the God force, is not Catholic, it's not Christian, it's not Jewish, it's not Muslim, it is not a religion. Those are man-made, restrictive, awful little creations that kill off the soul energy. And Mary appears everywhere around the globe to all kinds of people, all colors, all types of financial status, all kinds of tragedies and well-being to help everyone and to give them encouragement. So does Buddha. Buddha reminds us of compassion. Buddha teaches you that there are many cycles throughout the lifespan of the universe and to be compassionate to yourself, to have patience and to have understanding. You must have inner understanding of yourself and why you're here to know where you're going. Now, Avalokiteshvara is an interesting energy. Avalokiteshvara, like Krishna or like Babaji, can appear as both male or female, the androgynous look, but generally she appears as a female. And she is a soul who, through the teachings of Buddha throughout the eons of time, has reached God perfection. Now, I am not a Buddhist because I disagree with their concept of nothingness. I've already experienced this something, somethingness in all my death experiences. And to say that the nothingness exists and that's the ultimate, that's not correct. Where that got started is beyond me because Buddhism comes from Hinduism and Buddha simply tried to simplify all the complications of Hinduism and make it a more tangible concept for the ordinary person who is not educated. And Avalokiteshvara teaches that through self-compassion, through persistence, through dedication to a higher good, we can all achieve God enlightenment. So in this month of May, I don't care if you're a Southern Baptist, I don't care if you're an Orthodox Jew, I don't care if you are a Mormon, what your religion is. God sends us these special beings throughout the year, and of course they're here all the time, but they make a special effort to send light to us at certain times of year. Take advantage of their special blessings. Ask them to guide you. It doesn't matter what your man-made little ideas are about the universe. The universe is phenomenally expansive and we get lots of opportunities throughout every lifetime to bring ourselves to a higher consciousness. So ask Mary, ask Buddha, and ask Avalokiteshvara, Avalokiteshvara actually, but say Avalokiteshvara, that's probably easier for the English tongue to send you special awakening energies and special blessings and all of your loved ones and the entire planet because we're in a lot of trouble here on this planet and it's up to each and every person to change themselves for a higher good to radiate that out to other people and to help revamp this entire planet with our behavior and our attitude so stay with us we're coming back for an journey. This is where we get a chance to relax and reduce our stress and just tune into the divine energy. So with your eyes closed, you're going to be focusing right above your nose, between your eyebrows, and through the nose, take a nice deep cleansing breath, sit up nice and straight, palms open comfortably on your lap, and repeating OM to yourself, the universal blessing. And tonight, we're on the path of enlightenment and bringing in the blessings of special beams of light that God sends to us throughout the universe. From ancient times back to Lemuria, Atlantis, Egypt, dear ones have come to this planet 
to radiate different aspects of God, different personality qualities that we may learn and adapt to our own lives. All cultures have reflections of this God light. And at this time of year, Mary, known as the mother of Jesus, sends us love and blessings and asks us to bring prayer and meditation and kindness into our daily lives so that we may cleanse ourselves of fear and sorrow and anger and bitterness of prejudice and hatred and bring in harmony and brotherhood for all. She brings the message of universal love to all beings. Buddha, the great compassionate one, sends us special love, helping us to be patient with ourselves and patient with others and patient with the times that we are in and to have great understanding of the lessons that we are all learning. Not to confuse patience with the laziness, but to know that with purpose and persistence comes the awakening that we all experience lifetime after lifetime. Avalokiteshvara, radiant, blessed, attaining God's vibration and wholeness and completeness through the teachings of Buddha, radiating her compassion and gentleness to all, teaching that all souls will go home again to the Heavenly Father, Divine Mother. All souls are sparks of God. All souls are entitled to be in the light. And compassion must start from within. Feel yourself cleansed in the waterfall of truth and light. This waterfall exists throughout the galaxies for all souls to be healed and blessed as they are cleansed. Feel the waters rushing outside and rushing inside to fill you with light. For as Buddha says, you must empty the vessel before you can fill it. So cleanse yourself of all things that are not for your highest good and fill yourself with the light that is. As you are now filled with harmony and newness and awareness, feel the male aspect and the female aspect of your soul self becoming balanced, perfect, in harmony for we are both male and female female and male as is the God and in perfection neither the great secret of the universe is that we are but one as you make your progress Feel God's light reaching down from the heavens to bless you, encourage you, bring you along on your higher path, to help you remove yourself from obstacles and negative forces and have the courage and the persistence to strive forward and higher in the light. All souls seek harmony all souls seek the balance of the universe and the love and the joy 
that comes with the total light and the blending together of all forms of life in God's light. Feel this light and love radiating throughout the planet, vibrating up through the galaxies and the entire universe and back again, a circle of love and light for all forms of life. For we are one with God, for we are one with the universe. Hello, I'm Linda Bennett. Do you have questions about your personal life? What about your relationships? Where is your life going? How about a career? Do you need to go back to school? What about those spiritual questions you always had in your back of your mind, but you just didn't know who to ask about them? Or how about finding out why you're here on the planet to begin with? Call me at 736-4567 and we'll arrange an appointment. Now, if you have a product or a service you'd like to advertise with us, call 736-4567 today. And for those of you who want to learn how to relax and um, just visualize some of the things you want in your life, then you would use the first side of my two cassette kit called Inner Journey Volume 1. If you say, gee, I don't know if I'm ready to learn how to meditate, fine, just use this part of it and then work into the meditation. The second side teaches you how to breathe and to visualize and to meditate rather. So you get the full spectrum of how to work with your body, how to calm yourself down, how to focus your mind. And the next tape, the first side teaches you how to get rid of all the disappointments and the bitterness and the sorrow wash that all out of your life and bring in new joy and harmony and peace the very last side teaches you how to tap into your own true potential many people say they get flashes on past life situations or situations that are coming up in the future but how you use them is very important and you must use the tapes when you purchase them uh, I don't want you to leave them there sitting on your corner this is your tool of self-control and self-improvement no hypnotics people, no subliminals. You are running your life. So go on to the Oak Trail Bookstore or the different bookstores in the area, or you can pick them up at my office, Inner Journey, Volume 1. Anything you want to ask right now, if it's your personal questions, if it's open metaphysics, anything you want to know, call her first name and come with your question. Hi, Linda. It's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. I have a question. Um, um, right now I'm leasing somewhere. It's over in Countryside, mm -hmm. and I saw a place today that I really like, but it means breaking the lease where I'm at. Mm. And I got three months left of where I'm at, mm -hmm. but I am I'm I'm really unhappy. It's you small. can't you can't you know time it out so that um, I don't think the other people would want that. They're going to want to rent it out as soon as possible. Yeah, they do. Um, I'm getting feedback, guys. We need to be careful of that. Um, can you sublease out your apartment? Um, I don't believe I can. Because um, I'm not feeling they're going to be real happy about you um, leaving. You, you leaving your lease? They're they're anticipating that you're going to renew it. Right. Um, so you have to, you're going to be stuck here. If you can work something out, I'm still getting feedback. If you can work something out um, where maybe you pay for two months and then ask them to wait an extra month, you know, right. see if you can do that, if you can really negotiate. If you were my friend Mary Louise, she could sell snow to the Eskimos. I mean, she can just negotiate anything. But really, no one wants to lose money here. And the right. other thing you may want to do is try to find somebody to lease your apartment. Right. To, you know, so that they don't feel like they're hanging. Right. Because they really anticipated you renewing. Really? Ooh. Okay? Okay. So the only thing you can do is negotiate. Uh, and boy, this is a toughie. I'd, I feel you've got like um, a 40% chance of doing this. So, <laughs> yeah. You know. I just it, hate where we're at now. It's just way too small. It's yeah. Two kids. If you can find someone to take over your lease, they will be more interested in that. Okay. In fact, I may know two girls, as a matter of fact. Is it a two-bedroom? Yes. You know what? Does it have a washer and dryer? Yes. Call my office. Okay. Call my office at 736-4567. Okay. Do they take cats? Um, well, <laughs> I have to. <laughs> well, they have four. <laughs> You know, you know, they, after, they kind of know about them. After two, what's the difference? You know, a tail here, an ear there. You just can't tell. So, um, and they're declawed. So, you know what? Call my office, tell me who you are, okay. and I'll have Renee call you back tonight. Okay. All right. All right Maybe we can work this out. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Right, thanks, Linda. Thanks. Bye bye. Call her first name and comment her question. Call her. Sharon. Okay, Sharon. 
Uh, yeah, my uh, question is, I've been in a downward spiral for about three years. Uh -huh. Do you foresee it <laughs> you ever? And me both. Uh, do you foresee it ever? Yes, changing? I do. As a matter of fact, I feel like the summer is getting brighter for you. Now, I'm a northern girl, so the summer to me is the end of June, July, August, beginning of September, and I don't know what's going to happen, but I just feel like an uplift. Also, you're right; it's a cyclical kind of thing. Um, do you have Pisces or Virgo in your chart anywhere? Do you know? No, I'm. I don't know. I'm Scorpio. I don't know. Oh, honey, that's the hardest to be. I'm a Scorpio rising and moon, and life for us is really a struggle. Do you understand why? No. It's the female energy of God, the power to create and destroy. What's happening? The power to create and destroy. And it has more um, power, more responsibility, more intensity than everybody else does. And it's very hard for us, because unless we find partners that also have Scorpio with the same amount of responsibility and intensity, we feel like we're alone. We carry a big burden on this planet. So I'm that and alone. Huh? I'm separated and alone. So. You know? Hey, <laughs> join the club. But you know it's better to be without someone than with someone who's making you miserable? Amen. Ha haven't you uncovered that one? Yes. So um, what you need to do is gather your forces up for yourself and really begin to tune into what the higher good is for you and do your happy soulmate list because I feel um, within a year, your calendar year, you're going to be meeting someone. So let's make sure it's the right person. Well, the financial and, and get the divorce. <laughs> Call my attorney, Harvey Spinowitz, 449-9929. Here's your commercial, Harvey. And call him, and he'll do a good job for you. Okay, let's get that over and done with. Uh, and you need someone who's going to fight for you. Okay? Thank you. So it'll be tidied up by this calendar year. Things should be breathing a lot better for you. Financially, I hope. Yes, and I'm feeling some kind of change. Do you work? Yeah, and I think this job is going by the wind. Yeah, it is. We need to get you reemployed somewhere else. Yeah. A whole new breath of energy. Same type okay? of work, though. Uh, we have time for one more. Call her quickly. First name and comment or question. Fast, fast, fast. Quick, quick, quick. Call Judy? her. Yes. Okay. For the last few weeks, I've get, been getting a lot of phone calls mm -hmm. early in the morning and late at night, and whoever's been calling is hanging up. Yeah. Should I be concerned about that? Yes, this? get your number changed. It's someone you know. And um, in fact, you know what? Call the uh, police and tell them you want a tap put on your line. You're going to have to have that done. I, I really feel you need to do it's that. It's something negative then. Yeah. Okay? okay? It's not just a kid. Okay? I feel it's someone who, who has seen you or something like that and knows you. So work with the police. Get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then get it changed. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We're out of time. I do not believe where this hour goes. If you just remember to open up your hearts and minds to God's universal truth, you are going to know that God and the angels are always with you. Stay with us.